Hello, my name is Troy White, and today I'm here to talk to you about uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and your retirement portfolio. So uh, we want to just go over how do you build a cryptocurrency retirement portfolio in general. And so first thing is you need to learn about the blockchain um, because cryptocurrencies exist because the blockchain exists. So what is the blockchain? Blockchain is... Uh, it's a, a infrastructure uh, technology that uh, overlays the internet. Um, it's it, some people call it the internet on steroids. Um, but but fundamentally, what the blockchain does is keeps a record. It records all transactions that occur on the blockchain, and uh, it it's, it's, it records these transactions. Our interactions are, are all activity as a, a series of data blocks. So you combine all those data blocks into a long chain record. And so the purpose of the blockchain is to solve the duplicate record problem um, without the need for a centralized database server. Um, the uh, duplicate record uh, uh, issue is one that uh, you'll understand uh, when I just break it down like this. Like, as you know, when you write a check, um, you get a check to a store uh, for $20, right? And for some product, the, 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 um, the store doesn't know whether you have $20 or not in your bank. So there's a checks and balances, you know, they'll, if you come up on the check system as a bad guy in the first place, then maybe they won't take your check. But fundamentally, there is no way for them to tell whether you have the money or not. And so that allows me to go to the store next door and write another check for the same $20 that I just gave them when I only got 20. So that's a duplicate check problem. And so this occurs on um, technically in a lot of different scenarios um, that's kind of an issue and so the blockchain is it, it prevents that from happening and it's a good thing that it prevents that and it's it's used to um for the secure transfer of money property contracts etc on the internet and we can dive into a little more on that um but the blockchain will soon become integrated into your everyday life um, it's keeping a permanent digital record of every transaction that occurs everywhere forever. Get my water. And so <clears throat> that's great. That's what the blockchain does, right? But how is the blockchain going to get all this information and all of this stuff, right? Well, um, our payment processing system is moving to the blockchain and not only that the internet of things iot you might hear about it referred to and this is a system of interrelated uh, interconnected objects that are able to collect uh, and transfer data over wireless networks without any human intervention this is important without any human intervention so think about that if if the computers can uh, work on your behalf and transact and make do and, and in, enter into transactions that you probably uh, instructed the technology to in, engage in well how will the computers pay each other they can't, right? Well, they're going to need digital assets. In the simplest terms, a digital asset is the content that's stored digitally. Uh, could be images, photos, videos, uh, files, uh, text, spreadsheets, slides, etc. And so that's what Bitcoin is, a digital asset. So Bitcoin launched in 2009. It's one of the f world's first 
or it is the world's first decentralized currency or call it decentralized digital asset. And so Bitcoin uses a blockchain to create the digital asset that it is and it's entirely decentralized, meaning there's no one uh, government or any um, any um, banking institution that can pull the strings and, uh, and manipulate its value or, or how, where it goes, how it goes. <clears throat> and so this is good, but why? Well, why crypto is because uh, it's going to become integrated into every online transaction involving your everyday life. And it's partially because of those things I mentioned, IOT and other other businesses migrate to the blockchain, etc. And so crypto is going to be the catalyst to the new digital asset economy that is occurring that we're in and there's no getting out of it. Um, and it's essential for achieving economic independence into the future. If that's something you're interested in doing, you better get a hip to what's happening with the blockchain and with um, digital assets in general. So you can boost your retirement portfolio with cryptocurrencies. Your IRA can hold cryptocurrencies and take advantage of the tax benefits that come with investing in IRAs. That, and when I say IRAs, I'm a, I'm gonna just mention the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. However, these types of IRAs must be self-directed IRAs. A little bit different than the than the one you're used to. And we'll talk a little more about that later. So, if we're going to build a cryptocurrency portfolio for your retirement accounts usually most people don't even know what's a portfolio so let's start there what is an investment portfolio investment portfolio is a collection of investment assets that are compiled to achieve a certain financial objective according to that investors risk tolerance so that means you are compiling assets because you want those assets to appreciate and you have a goal that is targeted for that appreciation. And that and we are investing in this asset based on your ability to tolerate certain risk. Because you should know that cryptocurrency are one of the most volatile assets that you can get. Um, what does that mean? That just means the price go up and down. It's high today, it's low tomorrow. So, according to your risk tolerance, but what is risk tolerance? <clears throat> it's one of the most important things to consider when creating a portfolio is your risk tolerance. Your risk toler tolerance is your ability to accept investment losses in exchange for the possibility of earning higher investment returns. What does that mean? It's the risk reward trade off. If you're scared to take a risk, then you are accepting lower rewards. If you are going after the highest uh, reward, you are probably taking on the highest risk. And so, so I'll put it to you like this: If an investment is a, uh, if you're trying to get twenty one percent gain, right? I'm just picking that number. Twenty one percent is your target where traditionally over any given 20 year time horizon, the S&P does 9%, you know, somewhere between seven and 9%, let's call it nine. And, uh, but you're trying to hit 21. So you, you're trying to beat the market, first of all. So if your this investment that you should select has the, you know, you're targeting 21%. Well, that's 21% positive as well as 21% negative. If this thing is good enough that it might return 21%, it's also good enough that it might lose 21%. And so it's just a matter of when you need your money, right? Is it down when you need it? And sometimes that's that's the true issue, not 
not that this thing won't ever hit 21, but you know, it, it's the timing of it. So we don't want to time the market. So anyway, um, cryptocurrencies is a way to combat the volatility. Um, well, there is volatility in crypto and we need to combat it. Let me put it like that. Now, how do we do that? We invest in different types of cryptocurrencies and you can set an asset allocation that reflects the amount of risk that you comfortable taking. And it's going to, in the potential gains that you're hoping to achieve um, to reach your financial goals, then you're going to have to diversify within crypto. So within the amount that you have designated, I'm going to invest this amount in crypto. We need to diversify that amount within the crypto space. So crypto portfolio diversification is important. And so your account should hold different types of crypto for the diversification. And because that's going to help you manage the risk, including those uh, what's so-called stable coins, which are pegged to the fiat currency, like the dollar. And so to balance your risk, stable coins, which are theoretically stable, right? Uh, can help hedge that volatility is, is really what I'm getting to. So um, more established coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano, um, those are the those should be the meat and potatoes of your uh, crypto portfolio. So, uh, you know, but so there's more established coins. You know, I mentioned Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, there's Dogecoin, there's Litcoin. All of those are not necessarily, uh, they might be uh, uh, well established, but they aren't necessarily uh, coins that you should be building your retirement portfolio on. Uh, a crypto portfolio may contain two or more of these types of cryptos that I'm talking about, but in addition, you, there's countless other cryptocurrencies out there, smaller cryptocurrencies available. So to get the right uh, risk reward, reward trade-off means we're going to have to have some established ones, some stable ones, as well as some some of these new ones are, you know, through the research, you feel that this one is, you know, it's a micro now to be a macro later. That's how you hit home runs. So we want to hit some home runs. The other thing, one of the most important things I mentioned earlier are the types of investment accounts that you're going to hold. Now, your overall portfolio of assets will consist of multiple types of portfolios because you're going to have multiple goals, multiple needs, um, multiple time horizons, uh, time points in time along your time horizon when you need to achieve these funds. So uh, if for a longer term investment goal, uh, we want to be more aggressive. We don't want to be conservative with our long term investing and so these various goals of which retirement is one uh, are going to require us to have many different account types so we're going to have uh, your individual investment account your traditional iris your cus custodial accounts for your kids uh, that's owned by the it's, it's it's created by the parent and for the benefit of the child becomes the child's property at age of maturity uh, there's business accounts there's investment club accounts one of, one of the uh, account types we service we we uh, offer our clients uh, we have investment clubs as clients and we provide them the uh, wealth management and uh, financial education as well but for your cryptocurrency portfolio specifically for the purpose of retirement you're going to have two one of two account types or, or both of these, a self-directed IRA and a self-directed Roth IRA. Now, <clears throat> an IRA and a Roth IRA also come in a, just a traditional form, which is for holding, you know, your mutual funds, your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, etc. But a self-directed 
account is for alternative investments. And for all, just to keep it simple, uh, alternative assets fundamentally means cryptocurrency, real estate, and your uh, your uh, holdings in LLCs. So if you're a partner in an LLC and you own 20%, then your 20% can be held in your self-directed IRA. And so um, this becomes this comes into play a lot with real estate investors that are investing into uh, into syndicated deals. So you, there may be an apartment complex, and uh, you know the minimum investment might be a hundred thousand um, dollars. So, but you know it could be a ten million dollar complex or a hundred million dollar complex. Well, you have, where is it most likely that you're going to have 100000 for the average person? Most likely, that's in your retirement account. So if you have that in your 401k, we can roll that over into a self-directed IRA. Bam, you're in there. All right, so so to build a an investment portfolio for your retirement that consists of cryptocurrencies, you need a self-directed IRA or a self-directed Roth. That's my point. All right. As I mentioned, we're building this portfolio. We need the stability. We want the powerhouses in there. Those who are tried and true to pass the test of time, that's going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum. So there's a lot of other stuff out there, but those are the two stable not stable they're not stable at all those are the two big boys that you should have your hand in if you're engaged in crypto at all so let's talk about bitcoin uh bitcoin uh came into play on uh october 31st 2008 some person named satoshi nakamoto it's probably not even a person. It's probably an entity, you know, a group of people. And uh, I've seen some videos. They tracked it down to who they believe it is, but none of them are going to say, yeah, that was me. So um, it's a cash system that's fully peer-to-peer, -peer, no trusted third party. That's important. No trusted third party. I, I could talk for days on that, watch some of my other videos, but that means we're cutting out the middleman. Um, it's gaining ground worldwide as a stable currency some countries are are have adopted it as their currency their national currency um, bitcoin has a fixed supply there's 21 million coins that's going to exist but we don't care we can buy fractional shares always and currently i think we're at like 18 million or 19 million or something like that so it's not much more to go um uh, Bitcoin has shown that when there's financial chaos, uh, it's being viewed as a solid diversification instrument. Uh, it's a good place to park your money during times of instability of countries or, or worldwide instability. And so then let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality basically they created the smart contract um, smart contract as i mentioned how are these uh, uh, computers and whatnot gonna talk to each other and make transactions on your behalf because you have a smart contract it's a it is contracts that are that are uh, embedded onto the blockchain onto the internet they they have triggers that that make it go and um, and parameters that you know it's, it's either going to go down or it ain't. If if you met these criteria, then it's going down. If the criteria is not met, it's not going down. So the so when I run out of milk, you done told your refrigerator, buy me some more milk. And so it's going to reach out to the grocery store you you contracted with. It's going to buy the milk and it's going to send you the milk. Now if the store don't have milk or you don't have money, that transaction is not going to occur. That's smart contracts is, is making all this happen.
in the background. So um, that's about Ethereum. So you want Bitcoin, you want Ethereum, you want maybe a stable coin, and then you want some of the smaller um, coins, and, and, you know, that you could potentially have big gains on. So let's go over some of the. So altcoin is something that you're going to hear. Altcoin just refers to alternative coins, right? Alternative to what? Alternative to Bitcoin. And uh, first on the list is Ethereum. However, I'm going to say that Ethereum might no longer be considered an altcoin. Um, they're not alternatives. Bitcoin and Ethereum, not alternatives. It's like the U.S. dollar. Is that an alternative currency? No, that's the mandatory currency, right? So other altcoins, uh, Link, this company is Chainlink. There's Uniswap. There's Stellar, there's Ave, Litcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, EOS, Tether, Monero, Polkadot, Cardano, Dogecoin, Neo, and I could just keep naming more and more and more. But the thing is, depending on your um, your risk tolerance, your goals, the, your goal time horizon. And uh, and through conversation of what you feel comfortable investing in is how we would select the coins that you're going to invest your money in. All right. I also want to point out that having a cryptocurrency portfolio doesn't necessarily mean you need to own cryptocurrency. Or I should say, when building your crypto portfolio, don't disregard stocks that are crypto related or crypto affiliated so what does that mean that means as cryptocurrencies rise these companies that are heavily involved in the cryptocurrency arena in the blockchain arena will also benefit from that rise of cryptocurrencies so that's things like square amd uh, cme group uh, investor broker invest Interactive Brokers Group, IBKR is, is their symbol. That's a company that facilitates trades for companies like mine, which is a registered investment advisory. So they have, they do blockchain, provide blockchain services to companies like mine. That's not who I use, but that that's a known company. Uh, NASDAQ is another one you should buy. SIBO, not the rapper. It's a Chicago Boards Option Exchange. That's what SIBO means. And so they are, um, uh, Chicago Boards Option Exchange also hand, does, uh, they handle um, uh, futures and things like that. And so uh, cryptocurrencies fall under their purview. And I think when more regulation comes, it's coming from over there. Uh, MicroStrategy Incorporated is another company. Uh, Overstock.com, surprisingly, is heavily involved in uh, the development of uh, blockchain and um, decentralized finance and uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, Microsoft, Visa, MasterCard, NVIDIA, and there's others. But I'm just pointing out that as positive things occur for uh, crypto, Positive things are likely to occur for companies that are involved with crypto. All right. You should hold cryptocurrency as a long-term investment. Uh, currently, investing in cryptocurrencies over the long term has proven profitable. It's important that you know about the market before investing. So new investors find this hard because um, any because cryptocurrencies... Uh, are volatile so it could be up and then down really quick you have to have the stomach and the understanding on how to uh, how to invest in these types of volatile assets and those who don't understand those who are too scary they buy high and sell low that's that's just what's gonna happen to you you're just gonna lose money and so you should understand it's long-term investing and and so how many cryptos should you hold? If you're a long-term investor, having 10 cryptos at the top would do it. But amongst these, 
uh, I, I'm suggesting five. But amongst the, if you're going to have ten, amongst the these ten, at least five should be held with the vision of at least five to ten years out. And three of those coins should be the closest rival of your top holdings. Should be the closest rival, three of them. And two of them should be from the latest trends in the market. So that's because you're trying to get in where you fit in and, and benefit from these wild um, gains that some of these cryptos have. But at the same time, you need to be in for uh, in it with the with the solid cryptos and the competitors of those solid cryptos is is really where it's at. That's the simple explanation. And so we recommend that people allocate 1% to 5% of their entire portfolio to crypto. Now, um, and that's because very high risk is high risk because of the volatility. It could be up, could be down. But on the day you need it, if it's down, that's all that matters to you, right? You just feel like you lost. And so it's got to be a long term investment. And people need to look at, at it as if it's a um, small cap tech stock or even a micro cap tech stock. That's the kind of uh, volatility we're seeing. That's the kind of reactions to changes in the market that we're seeing. So the, the best, the way to build the best crypto retirement portfolio is keep tabs on current crypto values. Uh, read the research. Just be into it, reading about it all the time. Pay attention to how a currency is being used or will be used. How the how the creators of this currency, this crypto, how they intend for it to be used. If it's a, a lot of times there is no intention, and it's a it's something created that's looking for a reason to exist. And so this is the this is to me one of the most important things. What the hell does it do? And why should I care? Do I believe that that thing that it does is going to benefit 10 years down the road and be the next thing? It's going to be the wave of the future. If not, then you don't even need to be into it. All right, and then follow the news and events involving cryptocurrencies and the, the entire, the, not just one thing, one crypto, all the news on all the crypto. And any events that are taking place worldwide that affect crypto. And then uh, if you're still scared, you know, consider having a stop loss um, on, on your account so that, you know, you can sell when it falls down too low. Um, that's just another little healthy tip that I would recommend for the scary ones. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I am available to talk to those who need help um, building their crypto portfolio specifically for retirement. Uh, I can get uh, at our firm. We have self-directed uh, Roths and self-directed IRAs. Um, and uh, we're a financial planner, financial advisory, wealth management firm. And we can help you plan, learn, plan, and invest. When you need to learn about it, you make proper plans and then take action. So you need help with those three things, contact me. I'll, I'll keep my, um, my contact information in the description. Thanks for listening. Holler back.